Hi everybody, this is Neil Feiler and I'm here with a weekly astrological message for the week between March 26th and April 4th, 2021. This is where I talk about celestial transit, that celestial soup we're all swimming in, all zodiac signs and affects us all. And I want to begin with saying something personal. Um, You know, I always share my personal uh, life on cam, and for the last three days, I've been really tearing myself up to do these videos, and I couldn't. I couldn't because I'm supposed to provide you, the viewers, with guidance and inspiration, and I just felt that I couldn't do it. And of course, it ties into the sky, and it ties into this full moon we have ahead. So I'm going to share why. And I'm going to tell you about the full moon energies and then we'll continue onwards. So this is holiday season in Israel. It's like Christmas in the States. It's the one time a year that families are supposed to sit together around the table. And of course, it's the most sensitive time of the year for everybody who's lonely. For everybody who's alone. For orphans for people who've lost their families and communities for one reason or another, whether it is, you know, just, you know, life or maybe the choices that they have made, the ideological choices or the life choices that they've made, the career choices that they've made that maybe don't sit, you know, uh, on, this, on the same platform as what their families intended for them or whatever and were torn apart from that membrane, from that network of living souls that we call family, community, clan. And you know, that feeling of belonging, belonging that is not um, depending on anything. It's not a choice. It is something biological and natural you know all these belonging to these communities we are part of whether we want to or not like our families our neighborhoods the you know the ethnic background we come from the religious background we come from um, the national background we come from we are all parts of these communities, big or small, and we don't really have a choice. And that belongingness isn't subject to anything. It's there. It's supposed to be there. And once there's a rupture between you and that identity and those people, the hollowness, the gap could be too wide for some people so in the transgender community and I've been an activist for many years even before my transition we already know that days leading to the holiday and especially through the holiday more suicide attempts more actual suicides too more people commit themselves to mental hospitals and basically as a community we know we need to look after ourselves so for me in this holiday you know I knew you know for my own mental health and for their mental health I'm talking to my orphaned uh, handicapped friend who's alone and I'm talking to my male trans man friend who's alone ostracized by his family and I'm talking to my female a friend trans who's been ostracized by her family and these support talks that we give each other you know breathe into it this time will pass are so important because every holiday you're not sure that you can actually go through the pain of missing that attachment that support that love, that warmth, that isn't there anymore. 
How does that tie into this full moon in Libra? Well, Libra is about relationships. It's about love. And it's a bit about the value and satisfaction we get from this relationship and that love in our life. And this full moon in Libra isn't only that, you know, it stands across like any full moon from the sun, but in the heart of the sun, conjunct the sun, stand two planets. One of them, the ruler of Libra, the goddess of love and relationship, Venus, bringing in a Saturnian effect into this full moon. Every opposition has a Saturnian effect. So what we've sown is what we reap. Things that have been brewing are now on the boil. We cannot close our eyes to the truth of reality anymore and need to face it. And of course, Venus belongs to Taurus as well. So it's not only relationships with other people anymore and the value that we get in our lives from the love we receive from others, but also the relationship Taurus with ourselves, with our bodies, with money, our self-respect and how much we appreciate ourselves how much we feel good or bad about ourselves and how much our esteem is there or isn't there our self-esteem is all about Taurus you know so Venus is standing there asking these questions as well you know and she's standing conjunct the wounded healer Chiron, the place in which we're hurt, almost debilitated. And yet, if we work well with this pain, we might just be able to bear on and heal ourselves just enough to be able also to heal a lot of people around us. So these two are standing in the heart of the sun, across from this moon, asking us to acknowledge the pain, to acknowledge the wound, to actually tend to it right now, to actually understand the potential for healing. And with loving hands, understanding the sacred, painful work we do, like gardeners standing to a, you know, to a stem, A delicate flower, you know, just planting it in the in the ground. A delicate, you know, um, plant and planting it or replanting it in the ground. So in time it will grow and strengthen. This is a time we cannot ignore these places and these sensitivities in our lives and indeed are supposed to tend to them. Furthermore, this full moon makes an air grand trine. That is, you know, it's one grand air trine after another coming the next day. So a lot of grand air trines there, filling us up with energy, with mental capability, and the actual ability to rise above this and go on to use our support networks our social support networks and be more with people and less alone so at this time you know i want to i want to stress how important it is not to let people rot away in these concrete boxes looking at these squares called tvs that's been designed by the system because in this age of Aquarius that we are stepping into community is going to be the most important thing and it's not something utopic the age of Aquarius this is not um, um, Joseph and uh, you know the striped the striped gown this is not a musical you know the age of Aquarius. Nothing utopic happening here. This could very well be a dystopic age if we are not making it an utopic one. And in this age of Aquarius, age of human society, age of human networking, 
age of friends, age of social cohesiveness, of groups, of human networks. We will soon find out that the strongest person among us is not the one with most assets or money in the bank, but the one with the richest, most diverse and supportive human network around them. Cultivate that network around you. Learn to forgive trespasses made against you. Learn to forgive yourself. Cherish the love. Learn to move on. Make healthy networks for yourself, not abusive ones. Respect yourself and respect others. And remember, the age of the sacredness of the individual over everything else as it was taught to us by the capitalist systems we were all brought up in is over that paradigm is breaking up so um the 29th another grand air trine talked about already between the moon and Mars and Jupiter lots of energy there lots of mental capability of renewal there of going forwards of understanding which ideas and you know moves are not apt enough and are you know and not relevant enough as they were Wednesday the 31st um, and I'm sorry Tuesday the 30th Moon T squaring Uranus and Pluto. I'm sorry, Uranus and Saturn. Um, squaring Pluto a bit before that. This is not a day to be emotional. This is a day to step away from your emotions and look at them, not react to them. Understand them better, not react to them. And Venus is sextiling Saturn on that day. That's something we feel throughout the whole week. And when Venus is sextiling Saturn, it gives us the power to rise above things, to take up responsibility, to bear it with a straight back, and to actually stabilize relationships in our lives, turn them into something more long-term, and stabilize the relationship we have with money and assets and value in our life. A day after that, the Sun sextiles Saturn, again giving us this understanding that we are capable that we are able to create a platform that would serve us in the future and not something that would evaporate just like that. That We have been through the fire and now we bear the experience needed that we've come a long way. Um, other than that, a very imaginative day, Wednesday the 31st, Tuesday the 1st, a lot of energies, great day to tie up things you didn't um, get the chance to prior this week. And then on Friday we have another T-square in the sky between the Moon and Mars and Neptune. And there's going to be a square between Mars and Neptune next week. So this is something that is getting more and more intense. But when the Moon is there, we're going to feel it. And this aspect between Mars and Neptune is always bringing up the questions of potency against impotency, of capability against incapability, of my personal desires and action against, you know, what the world intended to happen, you know. Like the poet says, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. So that sense of me striking something that is greater than and vaster and unpredictable and, and, and uncontrollable as there with this aspect. And we have to be careful not to run away from reality utilizing any, you know, alcohol or drugs or, you know, any negative behavior patterns, behavioral patterns we might have in our, you know, in our um, makeup. And just understand, you know, that this is part of humility this is part of understanding who we are in this universe 
and it's going to pass. And then Saturday the 3rd, Mercury goes into, ingresses into Aries for the next two weeks. We are more blunt, we are more direct, we are more immature and childlike with our actions and navigation and our words. And we need to make sure that we are not getting into fights, arguments that are, are not needed. We tend to be very, very honest, sometimes too honest at these times. And Sunday, the fourth sensitive day between the male and the female aspects between us and in our lives. If you are in a relationship with another gender, watch it, Sunday the 4th. <laughs> um, and understand that the differences, and there are differences, make a whole. Something bigger than these two parts that is created through the understanding of different yet pairing and completing each other. So that's about everything I've had to say. I want to say that there's still 30% off all readings and you know studies with me, courses. And of course, I love you when you comment on these videos. I love you anyway, you know, but I love when you comment on these videos and spread them around. Thank you for doing that. This is Nia Filer wishing us all that we live long and prosper. Bye-bye.